Hi, this is Dan from Bible Prophecy and Truth, and this is part two of the video series on who is Jesus. And there's so many questions out there. There's so many people wondering who is Jesus. Is he the Son of God? Is you know why did Jesus do things as a van as a man? Why did he talk? about the Father, why did he pray, why did he do all those things, and we're going to talk about that. But it's, it's just like I said in the first video, we have to understand some truths in order to understand the lies that are so prevalent out there. We have to understand the difference between theology and philosophy. We have to understand what the mystery of God is and why there's a mystery of God, which we talked about in the first video. And we have to remember that God tells us point blank, in black and white, specifically just says that Jesus is the Almighty God. We don't have to use a philosophical interpretation. We can just read the scriptures and know that by using theology, putting all the different places in scripture that talk about that, that say it in black and white, and just put it all together and it becomes obvious to us. We don't have to have some person interpreted for us, we can just read it ourselves and see it by applying true theology. And so as we continue to study, it's really important that we bring that knowledge with us so we can understand the other scriptures. We have to remember that. So as we're going to, as we move forward, let's remember that Jesus is God, that Jesus said, I am. He said he is the mighty God. The scriptures tell us that he's the mighty God, that he's God the Father, manifest in the flesh, that the, the spirit which is God dwells within him. He is God, and God is Jesus. And I have to correct myself from the first video. I apologize. I was talking away and, and didn't catch myself when I said that when Jesus identified himself as I am, that he actually said it to Moses and I accidentally said that he said it to Abraham. So it really was Moses that he said that to. And God is manifest in the flesh in the, in the body of Jesus Christ. If you've seen him, you've seen the Father. These are all things that Jesus said. He said, I am. He, he said that he's the almighty God in Revelation. So it's difficult for us to understand because we're finite beings, we're created beings, and we don't understand how God did what he did. But the body of Jesus is the limit of the unlimited. He's the visible of the invisible. He's the finite of the infinite. You remember that the scriptures tell us that God is a spirit and that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's the body God created for himself the human body born of a woman that manifested in the flesh so that he could walk among us as a man to fulfill his purpose, to rescue us. And it's, we have to remember that I'm, you know, I have a spirit and a body, but I'm just one person. I'm a father, I'm a brother, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm all those things, but I'm still just one person. And God in the body of Jesus Christ, he's just God. He's just one. And we have to remember again that Jesus did and said things specifically to fool those who don't want to know the truth. Remember that he taught in parables uh, because it's given to those that love God to know the mysteries, but to those that don't love God, it is not given. And when Jesus said, he who hath ears to hear, let him hear, he didn't mean that those that aren't deaf or those that have ears, he meant those that love God are given the understanding. They hear it and understand it. That's what that means. So when we look at the things Jesus said, we have to remember that he said, you know, he speaks in parables because they see, seeing see not, and hearing hear not, neither do they understand. And it's fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said that very thing. And he said it's it, the reason for that is that this people, he said, draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
that's the whole point is that you have to love God Jesus said it right there their heart is far from me that's why they don't get it that's why I don't want them to get it because they don't love me they say they do but they don't and it's it's really all about loving God you have to love the Lord our God with all our heart all our soul all our mind and all our strength and if we don't the Bible tells us about that as well that if we if we don't receive the love for the truth if we don't love God we're not going to have a love for the truth and it says specifically in, in Thess 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that if you don't love the truth that God will send a strong delusion that you will believe the lying wonders of Satan it's if you don't love God you're not gonna get it and it's really sad that we have to acknowledge this fact but it is a fact that people who don't really love God will find it impossible to understand the truth they won't understand the identity of Jesus they won't understand the truth they won't understand the mystery they won't get it because they don't love God and God doesn't want them to know so I'm going to discuss more about Jesus but we have to remember and, and can't forget the knowledge that we already have we have to remember that Jesus is the Almighty God that the mystery hides it from those that don't love God and, and that's why we have so many books commentaries and doctrines out there that are just full of lies there's so many different doctrines and it's because people don't understand those that don't love God don't understand but they still try to understand in their own way for their own glory for whatever reason it is it's not because they love God but they're trying to understand and so and then they write books and they and they give all these commentaries and they do all these teachings and discussions and it's and it's all lies because they are deceived because they don't love God they're deceived and they teach that deception to other people that's just it's a fact and so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk more about Jesus and who he is specifically but there's like we talked about theology versus philosophy and the mystery of God and the identity of Jesus being that mystery we're going to talk about some other things like what is the meaning of the Trinity or a triune God as some put it what is you know who is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and you know how many gods are there uh, we're, let's talk about that because that's very important to understanding the truth and the identity of Jesus Christ it's 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 extremely important we can't until we understand this so let's start with who is the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit did the same thing it's the same word I'll show you a little bit later in more detail but as as we're told in Luke chapter 1 the angel answered and said unto her now the her here is Mary the mother of Jesus and he said unto her the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you shadow you and therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God so the Holy Ghost came upon Mary and she became pregnant with the Son of God with the child of the Holy Spirit and in Matthew 1 it says now the birth of Jesus was on this wise when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost so while Mary was still a virgin before she was espoused to Joseph she was pregnant with God's son the the seed that God planted it was not the seed of a man it was the seed of God and it was planted in Mary so that God could be born of a woman just as we are so the Holy Ghost 
is it tells us specifically is the Father of Jesus. That's so so that's God the Father. The Father is the Holy Spirit. They're one and the same. There's there's no difference. And in Acts on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost was given, Peter tells the crowd that this was a prophecy from Joel where God pours out his spirit on all flesh. The Holy Spirit is the spirit which is God the Father. And here's the scriptures where in Acts Peter told them, he said, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And then the actual scriptures that he was quoting, Joel 2.28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And remember, God is a spirit. And the Holy Ghost is that spirit. It's that simple. It's the Spirit which is God. As, uh, as it says in John 4, 24, God is a Spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Those are the words of Jesus. And so when we look at Genesis chapter 1, and we look at the Creator, the Father, we see that it's the same, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is the same Spirit that created all things. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That was God creating all things. It's the Spirit which is God. There's, there's no difference between the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and the Creator, the Father, God the Father, the Father of Jesus, it's just the Spirit which is God. There's, there's no difference. It's just the Spirit that is God. Now, I, I took the liberty of looking up the original Greek and Hebrew words for spirit and ghost, as they have them in the King James Version. And in the New Testament, I found that the exact same Greek word is used where they've translated in both uh, the spirit or ghost, i.e. the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. It's the same Greek word and they just decided to use ghost in one place and spirit in another place even though it's the same original Greek word. And then the Hebrew word when used to speak of the Spirit of God in the Old Testament as in Genesis 1-2 that we just read is the same meaning as the Greek word that was used in the New Testament when it talks about the Holy Spirit Holy Ghost. It's the same, it's just the Spirit, which is God. There's no difference. There's no difference between the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost. It's just using a different word for the same thing. And it's the same Spirit of God that is the Creator. There's no difference of any kind. There's no separation. It's the Spirit of God that is God the Father and the Creator. It's, it's just all there is to it. It's just a simple fact. And then Jesus himself said that he will come as the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye, shall, ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you, and here's the key. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He is going to come as the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is the Spirit of Jesus as well. As it says in Romans, the Spirit of God, if, the, if it be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. It's, it's, talking, it's putting the same two things in the same context, showing us that the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ. It's really no different. Remember that, that God is a Spirit, and God, the Spirit of God dwells within the body of Jesus Christ. The fullness of the Godhead dwells within him bodily. The Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of God. It's God the Father, the Creator. And another scripture, God, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. 
He says, and because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. When we talk about the Holy Ghost dwelling within us, the spirit of God, it's the spirit of Jesus. It's the same spirit. The spirit of God is the spirit of Jesus. They're one and the same. And then we, we have some other scriptures talking about the prophets from the Old Testament, how they prophesied of Christ by the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Christ which was in them testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, which, which was the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. It's all the same thing. The Spirit which is God is the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. It's just the same thing. So the Holy Spirit, being the Spirit which is God, it makes me wonder why there's this, why is there this concept of a Trinity taught as a truth in the church? Why does, why does the church teach that? Why do they teach that there's a triune God or this Trinity? And we know that God the Father is the Holy Ghost that takes three out of the equation completely. There is no, there's no three. The God the Father is God the Holy Ghost. The Spirit which is God is the Holy Spirit. There's, that, that just eliminates the difference between those two, which doesn't exist. So there's no three in the first place. There's no three of anything. God the Father and the Holy Spirit are the same Spirit which is God. So this triune thing, this Trinity thing is just not true. And as I'm going to discuss in uh, later in these in this video series, I'm going to talk about how that happened and why it happened. And then in Matthew 28:19, it's one of the quote quote proof texts that people use to prove that there's a trinity. And I, I want you to know that I didn't come to this conclusion or study this out because of any difference in translation or text that may or may not be what the original Greek said or anything like that. I studied this out because I learned the identity of Jesus Christ. I came to understand what the mystery of God is. And so when I read this scripture, it didn't fit with the rest of the entire Bible. And so when I came to understand who Jesus is and the importance of baptism and why we're baptized and the mystery of God, it prompted me to look at scripture through a magnifying glass so that I, so I could understand it. There's, there is no Trinity. And so when Jesus said baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, it didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense at all. Because the rest of the Bible doesn't line up with that scripture. And remember, we have to use the whole Bible to determine what the truth is. Because every record of baptism in the book of Acts shows that the apostles obeyed his command by baptizing in the name of Jesus. And so, if Jesus said one thing and the apostles did another, that just... What? Hold on a minute. <laughs> would the apostles have disobeyed him? No way would they have disobeyed him. The apostles, oh, apostles obeyed Jesus Christ to the letter. They did obey him. He just didn't say what it says. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you in just a second why I believe that. Here's some scriptures that prove what I'm talking about. The apostles all obeyed Jesus by baptizing in the name of Jesus. Peter said, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. In Acts 8, uh, they, they baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Acts 10, they baptized them in the name of the Lord. In Acts 19, they baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Acts 22, it says it's talking about the baptism of Paul. And he says, why tarriest you? Why do you wait? Let's get up, get baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. 
And in Romans 6, it tells us, you know, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, says in Galatians. And Colossians says, we're buried with him in baptism, wherein you are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. In 1 Peter it says, like, The like figure wherein who even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our baptism is in obedience to the gospel. It's putting on the name of Jesus Christ. It's being baptized into the likeness of his death. That's what it's for. And that's what I, when I say that, you know, the apostles all baptized in the name of Jesus, they were obeying Jesus. They weren't disobeying him. There's absolutely no way that they would have disobeyed him. So then that was the first test. The second test is, did they, I say they, the interpretation, interpreters of the Bible back in the first few centuries, did they change it to agree with what they believed? Like in 1 John 5, 7, it's, it's very common knowledge that words were inserted that were not in the original text. And I've got a screenshot here of the PC Study Bible. This is one of the tools that I use as I study the Word of God. And you can see here that I'm, I'm pointing out 1 John 5, 7 where I'm looking at Strong's Greek Hebrew Dictionary by verse. This is, I'm not making any of this, this up. This is right in the Strong's Dictionary. And we can see that these words that were put in there, that where it talks about the Father and the Holy Ghost and, and the Word and how these three are one, you can see that every single one of those words did not exist in the original Greek. You can see the definition of it at the lower right where it says that that was an inserted word. All of those words were inserted, do not belong there at all. So that's, that's an example of known insertion of words into the Bible where they put them there because they had such a strong belief that they, they felt they needed to be there even though they should not have been in there. And remember, those that don't love God can't understand the truth. And try as they might, they can't. And so they do things like this, like perverting and corrupting the Holy Bible with their thoughts and inserting it into the Word because they don't get it. And then, but then we have to be careful that we're not fooled by them by their deceit. So when we look at these facts, we look at what the apostles did in obedience to the Lord, we know that words were inserted in 1 John 5. It's a short step to understand that the words in Matthew 28 have also been changed. Where Jesus did not say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but he said, in my name. And, it, and when we when we understand that, it lines up perfectly with the rest of the Bible. So when we read it, it would say, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in my name, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. All power is given to Jesus, therefore baptized in his name. That's the truth. So, when we look at scripture, we don't have three. The Holy Spirit is the Father. There's no, there's no two beings or persons there. It's just one. It's the Holy Spirit, which is God the Father. Jesus is the body God made for himself. Jesus is also the Father because the Spirit dwells within him. 
Remember that the Spirit is not given by measure unto Jesus like it is us. The fullness of the Godhead dwells within him bodily. There's only one, and his name is Jesus. So I have other articles on my website uh, that I've got listed here. You're, I encourage you to go read those and study the scriptures that I quote. There's a number of other links on those pages that take you to other pages that show you other scriptures that that you'll want to study. Definitely do that. And if and if you need to talk, go to my contact page. Send me an email. Fill out my form. Or go to my Facebook page, which is listed right here. Definitely, if you have questions, if you if you don't understand what I'm saying, contact me, please. So then, in the next video, we're going to get into that meat. We're going to get into, it, it was important that we go through this discussion and understand these other things before we can really understand who Jesus is. And we can't ignore the scriptures that we've already read that have proven that Jesus is God the Father, that there is no such thing as a triune God. There's no three. There's no three. It can't, there is no such thing as a trinity. It was something that was made up by man in the early centuries. And, and I've, I've got proof of that. I'm going to show you later in the videos. Um, but I hope this has helped. I hope this has brought you to a better understanding of the Word of God and who Jesus is and, and kind of dispelled some of those lies that are out there to help you to understand the truth. So this is the end of part two. In part three, I will continue this study. The Lord bless you.